What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the second studio album by Welsh rockers Catfish and the Bottlemen. The new album is called The Ride, and I got into their debut album, The Balcony, a little bit late, and you guys have been begging me for a review of that, so let's do a little mini one to kick off this video. The Balcony is a fantastic debut that I was just slightly late on. It came out a little bit later in the United States. Kathleen was kind of a crossover success, started getting played on all alternative stations. I really started to connect with the record as a result of you guys suggesting it to me and of course me loving that single that I had talked about and then upon further inspection of the album itself it just blew me away. I thought it was a well done record, well produced, well played, a lot of rock instrumentation going on here, big harmonies, big soaring hooks, sing-along anthems, a lot of songs about like relationships, life, but it did it in a very fun and often kind of inspiring way. And I was on board 110%. Cocoon easily would have been on my favorite songs of 2014 list had I heard it at time of initial release. There's just a middle section of this record like none other. It kicks off well with Homesick and Kathleen, and then I really, really started loving things once Cocoon, Pacifier, even Hourglass. Once tracks like that came on, it was just a nice variety and such a thick album. And that's why I think The Ride is disappointing me so much. It's kind of like the Beartooth Syndrome. I just reviewed that record and it just felt like more of the same, just not as great. And it's by no means as extreme here with the new Catfish and the Bottleman record, but I still see some flaws here and some things that are keeping me from fully loving it. Now, I will say this for people going into the ride. I want you to take some time with it, especially if you were a fan of the first album, because it did not sit well with me on the first couple of listens. But once I actually started to look into the lyrical content a little bit more, started connecting with it on a music musical level and started being able to appreciate that, that's when I found myself enjoying things at least a bit more. Soundcheck was released as the first single off of the ride. I saw a lot of fans that weren't too happy with this track saying it didn't feel like Catfish and the Bottlemen anymore, that they had changed or they had sold out, etc. And what I'm hearing is a different song for the band for sure, but that's what I want from them. I want them to still sound like them, be able to go forward in this rock direction, but do new things. And they did that with sound. I think it's got a great guitar tone on it. I'm loving the howling guitars, especially once we get to the bridge and the solo of this track. And the chorus sticks like glue. It's talking about being infatuated with someone, but not really like wanting to admit that, kind of playing it off. In fact, there's several other songs on this record that deal with similar topics, and it does get a little bit dry after a while, but I feel like tracks like Postpone, and of course Twice as well, which really strikes as one of the best cuts on the LP, are moments that stand above, maybe dealing with similar themes of relationships, love, figuring things out, but they manage to rise above and not just stand there in the middle of the road like some of these moments do, unfortunately. When people ask me to put a finger on exactly why I don't like this record as much, what's so particularly incriminating, what makes this one bad compared to The Balcony, I don't have an answer for you. It's little things, I guess, that kind of add up and take away from the overall enjoyment repetition, something with the lyrical concept that I'm seeing a whole lot, just kind of the recycled lyrics about the circle of life, going out, having fun, hooking up, what to do after. It's like, figure it out, dudes, by the end of this record. It's just so frustrating because it's very tame, and even the instrumentals on tracks like this play it pretty safe, and I find Oxygen to be particularly annoying, especially the guitars on that track, even some of the drum work. It's just sloppy. There's two songs on the record that kind of slow things down, not like we had never seen this from the band before. Hourglass and even the opening moments of Homesick on the record kind of remind me of this, but I think they're playing it in kind of a different vein on this one. Glasgow and He throw being the two songs on this one with the latter of those being particularly incriminating just for feeling like it's imitating another style. There's several tracks on this record that just feel lifted from Oasis inspiration, especially in the vocal department. Some of the guitars on the track Heathrow in particular just really caught me off guard and I was like, wait, who am I listening to again? Pushing that aside, I actually do enjoy moments of those tracks. Glasgow in particular, I enjoy that one. It's just a story that feels like he's in this moment. He doesn't know what to do, how to handle this girl. And I do like a good chunk of this record. I think you guys might be getting the wrong impression due to my comments at the beginning of this review. You're probably thinking I'm smothering them with criticism, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Then I can get to the stuff that I actually 
do like. I already mentioned a couple of the tracks that I wanted to highlight. In fact, Soundcheck was great, and of course, Twice, that hard-hitting single. I love the kind of restraint, the buildup, and then the guitars, just a big strike there. And the opening moment, Seven, kind of talking about this long distance thing, saying, oh, you know, I forget that we're in different time zones, seven hour difference. And that one just kind of has a pummeling start to the record and really got me excited for what was to come. Red has a really solid chorus to it. I love the backing vocals that go on there. And that's something that I find that I would like to see more of from this band because whenever they do the backing vocals, they're very often completely on point. My favorite song on this LP comes right in the thick of it with track five, Anything. It has this thick swell to it and then a big chorus, just a huge payoff there. I love the thumping drum line that comes through and the strike of the guitars there. It's anthemic, but it doesn't feel like it's forcing you to sing along like some of these moments unfortunately do. I could point fingers, but I think you guys could probably do the math and figure things out for yourself. Something I noticed while listening to that track on repeat along with several other standout moments for me is that I really do enjoy the instrumentation on this record. There's a lot of really solid guitar lines here coming through with more than just being like a backing instrument. Some of the drums coming to life as well. And I'm finding that in places I enjoy it even more than their debut, The Balcony. Not to say that that was basic by any means or timid. Outside is the final track on this record and I'm a little bit torn down the middle on this one. It starts off a little bit more reserved and then it comes through with kind of a confusing chorus because it builds up so abruptly and then it kind of fades back into a little bit more of a dark laid back vibe. Referencing the title of the album, The Ride and Life. I kind of get that and what it's trying to do lyrically and then it molds into this kind of guitar outro and then it just shuts off and it's just kind of a baffling moment and I'm thinking well this has to be the official release because I'm listening to it on Apple Music I know it's just not a bad rip or something like that so uh, I I'm not exactly sure with that one and that's Kind of a good word for me on this record. Kind of baffled is how it leaves me because I like a lot of it. I really do. There's songs that I just rock the hell out to and I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun listening to all throughout the summer. And then there's ones that I just can't give recommendation to like Oxygen and I, I just see it and I want to back so far away from it because I know that they are capable of more. And uh, I would love to see them shift into a better band, I guess, in the future that tries more things, I should say. I feel like they played it a little bit too safe here, but that's just my opinion on things. For me, I'm gonna go with a strong three, light 3.5 for the new Catfish and the Bottleman record, The Ride. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Catfish and the Bottleman's second album, The Ride. Keep in mind, it was all just my opinion, and I'm sorry if I felt a little bit scatterbrained on this one. It's the middle of the night, and I knew this would be the only time I had to record, and I wanted to go ahead and get this review out for you. Sorry for everyone who who waited so long for my thoughts on their debut album. I hope you did enjoy this and uh, hit the like button on it. Subscribe to the channel because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. You can check out the last review that I did or another album that you might like by clicking those annotations there or you can check me out on social media at the links in the description down below. If you're curious, you can support me on Patreon to help the videos keep coming. That's the top link down there. Other than that, I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.